Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Tristan. We have a special guest today. If you oh, haven't hi. noticed, hi, the lovely Amanda is here joining yes. us. I'm Amanda. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. For having me. And today, <laughs> oh. oh, we watched a movie called Sater. <laughs> Sater. That's right, Sater. Every once in a while, I just wake up in bed. He's there. He, he talks to me. It's about a family dealing with a devilish cult who has ravaged generations. And our lead character named... Adam. Adam, trying desperately to get rid of him. What it's about is is a whole nother topic. A whole other level beneath that. Correct. Um, so I first watched it because you were like, let's watch this one. And it looked interesting. Um, but I think like now I would want to watch it for different reasons, like knowing what I know about it now. Oh like, yeah. Just reading up on some trivia. And like what you pointed out, out to me that I did is realizing that this is actually like a true story. Ish. Ish. Story. Of the forest shall tremble. Which is fascinating. Taylor's eyes are in every place. It's revealed to you slowly in the way that the story is told and that time is not linear and the filmmaker chooses when it's he's flashing back in time to go with like a grainier, like I think right the aspect ratio mm -hmm. changes. And it looks, we both were like, it feels like I'm watching. Well, this movie. Someone's home movie. Yes. It's like the fourth wall is broken. Like the fourth talking wall, to the camera. The fourth wall is completely demolished. It's, there is no fourth wall <laughs> yes. sometimes. The next thing I found out was that in my head, I was being told about things. We're already deep yes. into a, a conversation about this thing. And that's what this movie does. You really can't answer the question, how did you think? Because you don't know what to think. Let's just start with the opening and how amazing and arresting this thing is right off the bat. Yeah. It sure. has a title sequence unlike anything I've, oh, I've ever seen. I was going to say, yeah, opening and closing credit like are so unique and, and let you know both what you're about to experience and then, yes, confirm... Oh, I did just see that. All you're experiencing is this enrapturing kind of artistry. And it kind of looks like the lighthouse. And there are just these gothic images. It's, yeah, it's just the, the number of candles. Yeah. Like, and at first I thought it was all like a one take walk through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything about this is impressive. Because you think the movie is going to be all in this aspect ratio. And you don't realize what you're watching is essentially home movies in a certain the, the, definition they actually of the term. Are. And they actually and some of them actually are. Um of the yeah, the and director's it, own grandmother. It feels incredibly personal and like you're violating something you shouldn't be. Yeah. Right? Like like you're like yeah, like you're in a, a fly on the wall where yes. you really have no business <clears throat> being. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a weird feeling. It's it's in the first two minutes, and he's already grabbed you by the throat and made you feel very, very involved. And it only gets better because as the movie opens and we meet our three sibling characters, uh -huh. suddenly you're in regular widescreen 16, yeah. 9 like very cinema. Cool, you know, like no more, you Look. know, fourth wall exists. Yep. We are very much in a film. Slow burn, right? Like it's epitome. Thank you. Synonymous. Yes. <laughs> slow burn. Defined. Yeah. Like it is her. Slow <laughs> burn. I think that could be a really cool thing about this movie, but might also like cause a huge disparity between. Like, I feel like people will either really love it or really hate it for that reason because yes. it's so vague. I don't know. It looks inward at the the, the things that like haunt us. Like, the movie's about a cult 
following a family, but really it could we also think, be hereditary mental illness. Yes, we think this, anyone can project anything onto it, so it'll reach like a wider but more vast. I think. Well, and that's the weird part about it. People, the home videos, the four by three represents that that hereditary mental illness. Because they're actual home videos of their grandma experiencing mm-hmm. mental degradation. Also, why this film was made, the fact that, you know, the director, it's his grandma, it's about his family, actually, yes, and it we, took seven years. Like We then, did a little research. Yeah, then we that... We had to find out what was going on in the backstory and why this movie was made and why it is so unique and so striking and so unrelentingly personal. It's like, the thing that you noticed in the credits yes. said Nani was herself. We found out the... The reason it feels so arrestingly personal, the reason she feels so real, is because in our research we found out she is. Do you want me to read Yes. Both? So it actually says Sater was very real to June Peterson. He first came to her in 1968 through a Ouija board, and her obsession with him led her to being committed to a psychiatric hospital. You and know. so, like, yeah. the director took the ball of this real situation and ran with it yeah. to tell this quasi real yeah who, horror who, story. who knows the protagonist adam is the grandson of nani and he could very well you know represent the director himself in yeah some we way. were discussing that but that doesn't conduit. mean he sees or speaks to satyr but maybe no maybe because... he does Oof. oh i hope not <laughs> oh god i hope you have exercised Me these too. demons with this film my yeah. friend jordan graham jordan graham yeah wow let's just uh, who you, also built the cabin? He he built the cabin. He wrote the story. Made the he score. He directed the movie. He added the narrative, and he laid out his personal world for you to dig into and be yeah. horrified by. And if that's not one of the bravest things I've ever experienced, I don't I don't know what is. Like agreed. I can't stop loving on this director. And let's <laughs> let's talk about his, some of his choices because the cinematography we've already mentioned is incredible. Some of these shots are simple light yeah, in the you distance. Yeah, better to that. And he just takes your breath away with it. The color palette. Yeah. Those blues. The constant rain, too. And the yeah. yeah. The sound design the is so yeah. good. Because he, he has two seasons. He has, like, winter and then, like, the summer, fall-ish. Yeah. And the two color palettes are this nice yellowish-orange and then these steely blues. Just some of those shots, like, the just the, those little moments, like... There's one Adam, like, right off the bat. He's in the woods, and he's got his gun lined up, shoots something, and a mosquito lands on his nose, and you see it, and it goes away. I don't know how long he stayed behind a camera to watch. I wonder, like, if it just happened. <laughs> That's what like, I'm in an outtake, and then he's like, it's gonna happen again. Like, <laughs> no one wear your deke today. Well, and then, you know, <laughs> and like, bring him on. And then well, just to recreate it. Let's talk how this movie resolves itself. Does it? Right? I mean... Well, like any good horror movie... Are we, we've given some... Have we, I think we've given some spoilers. A little... Not really. We've okay. been pretty good. How long does he even flesh burn for? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, watch Seder to find out. <laughs> um, uh, so, it's a proper horror movie attached yeah. to one of the most affecting personal family stories to make this hybrid thing that... I don't know. It just takes your breath away. By the end of it, you're wondering if Seder can come on through the fucking TV and attack yeah, you. Like I don't know ring. how fucking uncomfortable. Kind of like the ring. Okay, so I gotta say that I was really surprised at the end, um, and I really think it's symbolic. Like, there's a certain dress and a certain appearance that's associated with this called with this demon. Um, fucking freaky. Yes, and there are insinuations that once you do something. On his, like, for, on his behest, on his behalf, at his behest, on his behalf. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. oh that Maybe was surprising every, yes. to learn. Well, everything is kind of shocking when it's revealed because yeah. half the time you're staring at a person stare at something. Now it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But then when something really happens and information comes out, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, and now, especially looking back, I think I have a little bit more hindsight on, like, what the ending really de- meant mm-hmm. for me. Is that it really showed like what what's what makes this movie scary to me is exactly I'm gonna go back to what Pete said about it's effing terrifying what the mind chooses to hang on to, and about de- demons like are as real as we make them. What's going on with your brother? 
what then that can do through the generations like it's essentially what he can make you do what yes. one's own mind can make them do yes essentially and that's exactly. what's horrifying I, for a long time there i was writing down stuff that was given to me like people talking to me so i would listen I'd just listen and write down what was being said in my head you know i had access to, to them it's just so it's so interesting to yeah. mix real and fake so seamlessly and to make us like ponder the nature of, of mental illness and mm -hmm. like and and like spiritual warfare it, that's a really interesting way to put it it is about like i don't know i think it's about it, obviously, in just given it genre, the focus is mainly on the darkness that can be yes. in us, and not even because we, you know, can help it. It's you know, yeah. this demon comes to visit Nani. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. say that's the kind of movie you're looking for where like some people i've read i could see some people might absolutely just completely hate it yes like i've read you know you things need to be in a mood it's yeah it's so artistic and i hate that word yeah but it literally it, it is it's so personal it can't help but be artistic yeah. so that's gonna and turn people stuff. off so yeah if you're curious yeah about something that you're watching that you feel like you shouldn't be Mm -hmm. Then check it out. Because... I'm curious about how a true story, how you take truth and fictionalize it, or like how what is truth and what is art. And I don't know. Yeah. And then then watch this. That's yeah. a great way to put it. It's yeah. it's it's a it is a like prime example of taking genre and art yeah. in general and just going well. There's still rules to break. Yeah. Yeah. Heck like, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. I recommend it as well. It's a certain type of movie for a certain type of person, but I'm, for God's sake, give it a chance. <laughs> for God's sake. Because it, it'll, it will scare the hell out of you. And we're not saying this at the behest of Seder. No, no, <laughs> no. He hasn't come to my room He's yet. He's not here. He hasn't hung out yet. When he does, we'll let you know. And leave us alone. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> leave us the hell alone, Seder. Um, but yeah, if, if you guys do watch it, if you check it out because of this review, please leave a comment because this is another movie where I'm very curious as to yeah. how you feel after watching it, how it leaves you. Um, because it's too. far too personal yeah. for it to not hit you like a ton of bricks. It's far too real, which is horrifying. <laughs> yeah, which is why it is so scary. <sighs> so yeah. Thank you guys so much. Yes, thank thank you, you, Amanda, for thank coming you, on Tristan. the show. Anytime. Good, because we're going to have you back for oh, sure. I can't wait. <laughs> Let's hope it's soon. I think it will be soon. <laughs> yes. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>